sweets and spices. Memes, I'm Marissa Roberto. And I am Barty Moore, and this is how a show's gonna work. We're gonna present all the goodies we've gathered, in which we'll discuss and most likely argue, but luckily for all of us, there is a mute button that we can shut the other person off for 30 seconds. I thought you were gonna break out into song there, and then I really would have muted you. Shout out to Chow, <laughs> we like it when you call us out when we're wrong, and praise us when we're spitting the truth. So let's get to it for our first story. It appears that streamers versus esports orgs is going to be a common theme this year, thanks to some brand new drama. Streamer Nick Merckx is accusing 100 Thieves owner Nate Shot of repeatedly falling back on his promise to give him a 5% stake in the org. Nick Merckx left 100 Thieves earlier this month and this week joined up with FaZe Clan. What makes this even juicier is that FaZe and 100 Thieves have been feuding these past few weeks thanks to comments Nate Shot made about Tifu's lawsuit. Nate Shot has not responded to Nick Merckx yet. Brody. Good call. Uh, do we have the beginnings of a phase versus 100 Thieves mm. rivalry for life now? Like, what do you think of this whole thing, and, and what would you do if you were Nate there Shot? Are there are a couple things to break down right here. Oh. What Nate Shot's doing right now is the right thing. Don't say anything. Mm -hmm. He jumped into talking about the um, Drama. that whole phase thing a little bit too soon. Yes. He retracted his, his tweets, actually, and he said, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I should wait till all the stories are out there. So he. And that also spammed uh, new copy pasta from Banks, who responded to him in the most vile, you're gonna regret saying this, once I come up with what I've got, like it's a whole copy pasta yeah. that everybody's been using now to that tweet itself, yeah. and that was to Nate To me, Nate Shot is still, looks like he's handling a lot of this better than, yes. than a lot than like Banks, Banks and sure. <laughs> is handling this. Uh, but uh, Nate Shot, you know, Here's the thing. Yeah. I, I don't think Nick Marks. Um, I don't think Nick Marks has any real right to get super pissed off and go public with this. I mean, like, no. it's kind of that's kind of shady to do. I mean, like, at the same time, Nick. Uh, sorry, Nate Shot shouldn't have been promising things he doesn't know he's gonna deliver on. He probably said to Nick Marks, <laughs> "Hey, man, I really want to do this with you. I really want to get you involved in this. Yeah. We should be able to do this really soon." Okay. Then he something happens, and he can't do this very soon. Are you gonna do it? Here's gonna do the it? other. Well, and then if. You Here's the other side of that story, if we're looking at it from Nate Shot's perspective. Because yes, you're right, I do appreciate that he hasn't been saying anything, just like Freddie can't say anything now. He hasn't been saying anything, and he did make this promise to Nick Merckx, which he, sure, he shouldn't have done, but when you're in the beginning of something, like the infancy of something, and you don't really know how it's gonna go, when you have this relationship, you have a friendship with somebody, you want them to be a part of it. So yes, saying, you know what, I'm gonna give you 5% of my company, for sure, you've been in this from the beginning with me, man, I've, I've got you, I've got you. If you don't have it in writing, it doesn't mean anything. Word of mouth is nothing in this community, nothing in business. Don't, do not buy mm -hmm. anything that's being sold to you unless you have it in writing. At the same time, end of story. don't promise things if you don't know what you can do. Uh, it's, no. it's a hard situation. We've yeah. all done it, um, but that was a good bait. I actually made you use it so you can't use it later. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Call of Duty Modern Warfare was announced yesterday, and there was a surprising detail revealed in the marketing blitz. There, will be no season pass. Mm. Instead, developer Infinity Ward will release new maps and post-launch events to satisfy fans. A season pass in COD usually costs about 50 US dollars, and before that was invented, maps would be sold in DLC packs. Mm. Marissa, this is a new approach for Call of Duty. Do you see this as like a, a shifting tide in the landscape of selling things to people post-game launch? I mean, it's like all of your wildest dreams have been answered, Brody Moore. <laughs> this is exactly what you've been asking for. You get a game, the game is finished. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get and any get the, additional yeah. things you need to pay for after the fact. I feel like everything that so far that's been released for this new Call of Duty has been pretty litty. Like the trailer in and of itself has it actually been looks really incredible. Good. It, yeah. Think about this. We're now, uh, I'll get back on topic in a second. We're now about to be in a world. We're in 2019. And it's gonna feel like we're in 2008 playing Halo and Call of Duty the way we used to. We're, we're going back to roots, baby, and I love it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, no, this, I, it kind of makes sense. You see the success of like all these passes, battle passes, rocket passes, and all these games, Apex has a deal, like all, everyone has passes now. You know that that's what's gonna happen with this ne yeah. next Call of Duty, but that's fine, because that's something that you don't actually have to purchase yeah. if you wanna stay up to date. There was so much fragmentation that happened mm. within the Call of Duty player base. Um, that actually happened, uh, what was it? It was um, Little Big Planet that actually happened in too, because there were so many extra maps and items you could get that some of the player base didn't have. You that is the, back. That, is the, back. that is the reason they actually made, I think it was Little Big Planet 2, yeah. was to reduce the fragmentation mm. uh, between the player base because it was harder to get in the lobbies with people. Same thing happened yes. in Call of Duty. So many times, uh, me and my friends, will, the, a thing will come up and say, like, oh, you don't have this map, you can't play on this, and it just reduces the chance of getting into a lobby quicker. So this is great, fantastic, but you do know they're gonna charge you for some stuff. Later. Yeah, yeah, of course. It'll it's probably just the be way cosmetics. Of business. 
Sure, exactly. Things that you don't technically need, but it would be yeah. nice if you did. And if you have the dough, well, I mean, you might as well spend it, and you might as well spend it to and give it to this company mm -hmm. with this game that you spend so much time with. I mean, all this stuff has been trial and error. Yes, trial and error only to mm -hmm. make more money for that company, but still trial and error nonetheless. And they have feedback yeah. from fans, and they've like been listening. Yeah, um, and it's, it's working out. Not going to pre-order, but I do like where it's going. Okay. Bad news, League of Legends fantasy fans, a new eSport fantasy service will not be launching in summer 2019 and will instead be delayed until 2020. Riot Games shut down the fantasy service last year after a sharp decline in users and told fans that new details would be announced this spring. Well, they didn't announce anything and fans are understandably a little peeved that it's being delayed yet again. Brody, what? should Riot even, I don't know, focus on fantasy yeah. esports anymore? Like yeah. they could leave that to other websites, you know? Yeah, uh, well that, okay, that is a valid point. I, more so I was just saying I think they do need that. I mean like, yeah. League of Legends, just MOBAs in general, are a very like specific group of people. You play League of Legends, that's pretty much all you play is League of Legends, right? So you want to give these people something to continue to be invested in. Mm. Especially as time goes on, some people get bored, some people fall off, they'll say, I'm over this game, it's been the same stuff. I mean, patches help, you know, yeah. shake things up a bit. But having something to invest even further in, you know, wh when I was doing uh, Fantasy for RL, it wasn't done by Psyonix, it was done by fans, Rocket League Garage, yeah. right? Um, but it's sick because it is the go-to fantasy and yeah. it, it helps me pay mo so much more attention. I'm watching all the players, all their stats, and the same thing, it's it's going to help the esports. So I think in some way, you got to have a fantasy league because the hardcores will be even that much more invested. Mm. I feel it. like because they're saying that they're going to do this and because they're delaying it now to 2020, it now puts the brakes on any other site that maybe would have dabbled in yeah. east, in the fantasy esports for League of Legends because yeah. they'll get shut down by Riot in the future. Uh -huh. So now for sure there's going to be no fantasy for these guys and that totally sucks. So I'm, I'm a little peeved to be honest, for them, uh -huh. because it, fantasy is so much fun to play. I play fantasy baseball. It is a lot of work, a lot of time devoted to it, but when you can actually play against friends, you know, it's, right? it's so much fun and invest you yeah. more into the game as well. Fantasy is so, like, it's so important for certain people that love doing that just, type of thing. So for Riot to take that away from them and to have no other company able to step in and I, provide, I wonder that if it was like a, a, a um, legal thing, like they realized, oh, this is actually going to be harder because maybe they wanted to put some sort of financial into it or something How? like to, I don't know. Or, but although it makes me feel like it was just like, whoops, we forgot about it. The fact that they just yeah. didn't say huh, anything. Yeah, they could have just been probably. like, sorry, well, there's some holdups, but they're like, oh, whoops. But well, they're we, dealing we, with we a lot of other things right now at Riot, okay? They can't deal. Yeah, that's true. They have a lot of other things on their plate. Mm. So that's <laughs> what two things are constant in the world of the other MOBA, Dota. The international is always great, and rosters are held up by paper. Mm. The latest D uh, Dota team to change its roster is Beast Coast, who dropped TNT and Eternal Envy from the team, despite the fact that EE founded it. Mm. What makes us crazy is the fact that Beast Coast signed the squad on May 1st, meaning it hasn't been a month since before they shook things up now. Ooh. Now, Marissa, it just like, there are a couple things to unpack here. Okay. First off, like if you were an org, would you even want to get like into the Would scene. Would you even want to get kicked off the team you found? Well, no, 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 into the volatility, <laughs> because uh, the, the volatility of this, and then at the same time, you know, do you think it is okay that an org is going to get rid of a founding member like that? Um, it's it's a little odd. Like, I don't know what kind of position he's going to take with the org now, if he still has a spot with them, or if he's giving up complete controlling shares of the company as well. Like, I'm assuming that's happened over time, because that's just how these orgs work. Somebody founds it, and then you get investors, and, and then your percentage is just whittled down to almost nothing. And then look at this. He's booted off a team. I don't know what the logistics are of Beast Coast just overall. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what kind of percentage he still has. It's kind of crazy that like he was on a team and now is just completely booted off of it. I mean, Beast Coast is still a legitimate org. Like They've got a lot of different um, teams out there. They've got players in the FGC yeah. as well, a lot of them homegrown here in Toronto uh, that we're just very proud to see play. Um, I'm just not sure if like, if this is best for the team, then okay, then let it be best for the team. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let them just oh, is, is there something you should get out of it? Though? I mean, like, I feel like it's, uh, it's just hard to, like, have someone that put together this team, gets a spot, or comes in, takes over, and then now you're out without anything. Like, should there be, should Valve start stepping in and saying that there's something? Should they get a little more hands-on with the, the players and... <sighs> and uh, how orgs are run and structured in this? Or I mean, should it 100% be up to these orgs? Yeah, that would be nice. But the thing is with business is that it's just like Valve is just going to shake hands with the people that make the business happen and make the money happen. That's not the question now, of what are the they players. doing, is what should they be doing? Should they be stepping in? In yeah, your opinion. But it doesn't, I know everything comes down to money. Your, your yeah, answer is always but money. That's the thing. It's like, should they? Yeah, for sure. Like morally, yeah. Like let's make sure the players are happy. The, the players have spots and they have some kind of, you know, benefits and longevity and like, 
like a, you know a life after esports for sure. I want all that to be in place, but that's not the case here. And not until they have like a legitimate players union to come in and help these guys and make sure they'll be okay and they'll have something long standing in this world. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Make a union. Yeah. Problem solved. There we go. It's time now to check in with streamers in Clip It. First up, we have another clip from D. Kane, who is currently living in a streamer house with Mitch Jones and friends. A little background on Mitch. He's known for storing his pee in bottles. With that said, enjoy. Okay. Dude, wait. Do you think that's beer? Do you think that's still beer in there? <laughs> oh! No! No! Gross, dude, they were floating. I assumed they'd be beer. God damn it, dude. dude that's my stash, man! Stop, Mitch! Those are my pee dude, I, I thought it tasted weird, dude. dude. You found my <laughs> So like, I don't know how much I believe I don't believe any that. of that, not for one second. <laughs> I, don't, I do not believe any of that for one second. That was like, this is a whole setup, it's a whole shtick, it's to get views, it's to get people lulling in chat. Like, give me a friggin' break, you guys. Also, like, who stores their pee in bottles? Obviously, that wasn't pee, um, but like, who, see, like, we, we live in a society. We out. live in a society with freaking plumbing and toilets, and they're there for you to use. I'll just drink your effing pee no, in bottles. I, like, you're not living in a you know, Maybe what? he was a trucker at one point. Yes, you know? I get it. Truckers like, it's the way that. of the road. I watch Trailer Dark Boys road. too. <laughs> for sure. Way of the road, absolutely. I get it. We, I do love that in Trailer Dark Boys because that's just like how she That's be. how it really is, though. But they're living in a home together with plumbing and toilets. You can use those toilets and be a human being. That is freaking disgusting. Maybe they you should be ashamed of yourself. pay their water bill. Devil's yeah, yeah, yeah. Advocate. I'm sure that place looks like they're not paying their water bill at all. Give me a freaking bit. Yeah. Why are you guys subscribing to these people? Honestly. Holy smokes. Right. Like, get a life. Well, speaking of way of the road, let's get on the road with oh our next God. one. Our next clip comes from Canadian streamer Hitch. He's currently hitchhiking through Japan and had an unexpected exchange. No, 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 no. No, you don't. No, 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 no. How do you do? No, 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 Why does he have US dollars? Why is he giving me a hundred dollars? I have so many questions. So do I. I thought that would give me. Wait, did, did someone just get in his car, give him a hundred bucks, drive 10 meters, and then get out? I need to go uh, to Japan. Yeah, that was very. Kind. What? Yeah, and he just had that dough with him. It's, there's, I don't know. I feel there's a lot to unpack there. Just leave yeah, it like, all with so many questions. I'm just, I'm, con I'm concerned what that driver was like wanting out of him. Like, where, were, where was he planning oh, on taking it? Right? Like, I see. You thought that this, maybe. Is he, this the start of one of those mature-rated internet videos that we all watch from time to time? Mm, I don't know. You're it was a pretty big van. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those <laughs> backseats uh, could be used or something. Okay. All right. It truly is the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. I love it when they discover the sweetest lessons in life. Call of Duty Pro Blast says, just found out you have to talk to girls to actually get a girlfriend. Brody, <laughs> in your experience, is he onto something here? Unfortunately. <laughs> you do, Unfortunately? You do have to be social. So what if you're mute, though? What if you literally cannot talk? Oh, well, that that would be something. That's a whole, a whole <laughs> but other yeah, box you have you have to leave your house sometimes. Uh huh. Not. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, <laughs> RuneScape could kind of lets you get around that. You don't what? actually have to talk to someone. You can get a girlfriend. You can buy them. Buying girlfriend. No, no, no. We're not. We're not promoting. Okay, <laughs> gold. No, 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 no. We're not promoting any What's of that. What's my girlfriend? No, but 15K. you like you have a lovely girlfriend, and you met via. What exactly? In like person. It, in person, but it, was it through, wasn't through... Through video games, which yeah. I started online, but it was in person. I yeah. actually had to socialize, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I, it, it was great what turned out of it, but th that part is hard. Taking the first step to leave your house. And now he's happy. 
unhealthy. <laughs> well, when I'm not around here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For her real For special <laughs> treats are action slacks and Pokemon <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> He says, with the announcement of the new game of Pokemon Sleep, I hereby announce Dota 2's Stay Up All Night because some guy ruined your rank game for no reason right before bed mini game. Unlike Pokemon Sleep, this game is free and I hate it. <laughs> that That is just online, man. You ever, you ever like, oh, you don't play online games, so you don't even know this, this pain. Sometimes you're playing, you're like, I'm on a streak, you know, I'm, I'm winning so good right now. I'm going to play one more game before bed. One more game before bed. And then, uh, and then I'll go to bed yep. just to cap it off. Even if it's a loss, who cares, right? And all of a sudden, you get into a lobby with some nugget head that is just like, oh, I'm, I, I'm not the problem, you're the problem. And he starts blaming you. They piss you off. You're like, I was in a good mood. Yeah. And now we just, even if you win that one, you're like, I am not ending on that note. Yeah. And then you go into the next okay. game's tilted and it's all downhill. I get, how dare you say I don't play online? Hi, Clash Royale and Golf Blitz, okay? Yeah, and but those, those are solo. That, that doesn't matter, you still get triggered. You're still facing one-on-one -on -one with people and Golf Blitz is one-on-three. It, trust me, it's worse when it's your teammates because they're supposed to be on your team. Just At least in golf lets you know they're working don't, against don't you. Don't assume my anger issues when I'm playing video games, okay? Our last pro on that is a little something for you to take home with you for the weekend. A little positivity from friend of the show and FGC staple, Katana Prime. Internet Anons say I suck, I'm phony, I'm gay. They would slap me, all kinds of things that are whispers in the wind. Then, these same people approach me with the big fan, nice to meet ya. Oh man, I met KP and he was cool AF in person. Don't stress Anons, it's not real. So Anon equals anonymous here. Yes, you thank agree? you for the internet. Uh, well, I don't know, people might not know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, 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 that, I think the real, I've had people do that. So like, this is why whenever anyone flames me, chirps me, whatever online, I always try to understand and say, hey, if you actually have some real feedback, I'll take it right now. Let's talk yeah, about this. Course. And a lot of times they're like, well, I'm actually a real big fan. I just, yeah. they're like, I just wanted to get your attention. Yeah, a lot of these people are doing that without, it's not actual malicious intent, it's selfish intent, right? They're not actually trying to be a dick to you. They're actually just trying to get your attention, which is not the right way to go about it. I'm not condoning this. No, I'm no. just saying, this is why I've stopped taking online, like just bad mouthing, like without any actual kind of critiquing. Yeah. Really unseriously and with so many grains of salt, like a whole mm -hmm. salt shaker of salt. Because it's like, it, they're probably not trying to be malicious overall, and I can't take them um, seriously. I mean, I've had people definitely try to be malicious. No, there are some. Before. There are some real, um, actual buttholes out there. For sure, and just and the thing that bothers me is the people that make just astronomically asinine assumptions. Those. Hey, wow, look at that. Um, <laughs> no, but they did, like, dude, that's the thing. You make assumptions about people that you don't know, and you just assume that yeah. they are a certain way, or, or I mean, and then they start spreading these rumors to other people that also don't know this person. Like, it's not, it's not okay. Like, you, like, just don't, don't, just be kind. Why can't you just be nice? Like, why don't you, ju just be nice and see how that might change your life. Just be nice, new something. life motto. It's a little something. Anyways, too much niceness. Let's move on because it's time to get to some crowd control. I want to start with something cool. Okay. Eunice is a company that's making a mechanical pong table, and I want to show you a glimpse of what's under the hood. Mm. That would have been so high. Like, how do you even start to think of making something like that? Yeah, yeah, like what? So what's cool is like the actual top half of that is um, they put magnets on top with like blocks. Mm. So it looks a lot more video gamey. That's just underneath it, how it's actually working. Okay. Yeah. But like you're supposed to be able to play it. Like it's not just, it's yeah, not Oh yeah, yeah, they just had the AA play, but okay. you can see the turntables on the side there, or okay. like the, the, the little spinny knob things. I'm a DJ. <laughs> the spinny knob things, okay, the next one term. is just straight up dope. No matter how uncool you are in real life, ready. VR can make you feel badass. Probably why you play a lot. <laughs> Now, for anyone who does want to jump into that, uh, I will say that that gun is a mod. 
um, that, that okay. some fans have made. Usually it's just medieval weapons. Right, like how did that even get in there? But they are adding official mod support, and I'm very excited to see some of the weapons that people come up with in that game. I really want to see you try this game one time <laughs> and see if, like, for once you could actually look cool in a game. What? I am, have oh, you seen burn. me play Stardew Valley? <laughs> no. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Oh You're my god. <laughs> Anyways, our last post uh, shows a little NPC breakdancing. He reacts from a bullet wound the same way I would when a bug lands on me. <laughs> this is, I love when a game just falls apart. Also, Sniper, great game. Uh, get it off! No! <laughs> get it off of me! <laughs> Those, this is how I expect you would be in that VR game. <laughs> just full flailing. I love it. That was like a little b-boy break dancing. You know when they like spin on the on the ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like doing that? yeah. Is that what they do? That was, that was like, well, I don't know. That's why like I call it break dancing. <laughs> That's like full on b-boy. I love that. No, but I just love when a game is broken. Can we, Not can when we, I'm playing I, it, but when like, I watch clips. For real though, can we actually get that set up in that game? Because I want to see what Marissa does in that game <laughs> and how much she's just flailing. <laughs> I'll be wacky inflatable arms. See if you can be a John Marissa. Wick. Bop, bop. Uh, yeah, I mean, those are goals, right? In game, though. In game, yes. Listen, no, don't John Wick in real life. Don't, no, of course not. Moral but do today. cheer for the Raptors in real life, because that's exactly what we're doing. Don't say anything, Brody. That's it for me to remember you can hit us up on our socials by uh, just saying hi and sending us stuff to react to. We love that. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now in chat for all of our channels. We'll see you next time.